Woohoo! And we're live once again on another Tuesday. And I have a special guest in the house today. I have Sandra Clark here. And we're talking about a very, very interesting topic. But before we get stuck in, let me introduce or let me let Sandra introduce herself and then we'll get chatting. So Sandra, tell us who you are and what you do and we'll begin. Okay, thank you. So Sandra Clark, uh, my business is called LinkedIn Mentoring. And I've been doing this about 13 years since I was laid off from the University of California system and had to reinvent myself. I know so many of you are facing that too. Uh, once upon a time, I was uh, involved with theater. My degrees are both in theater arts and I directed people on the stage. Now to direct, you also have to do some acting, but that was never my strength. I love to direct people, make them look good on stage. And now I make them look good on the stage of LinkedIn. I was also a teacher, and those of you who are, have ever been a teacher, you know, once a teacher, always a teacher. So that's my approach to LinkedIn, teaching people how to do it so they can feel confident using, using it themselves in the future. Ah, oh, I love that. Wonderful. What a, what a varied background, and I love it because it's, it's going to relate to what we're talking about today. So today's topic is LinkedIn for the socially reluctant. And I love this topic because, you know, a lot of us really, we get on LinkedIn for the first time, or even if you've been on LinkedIn for a long time, you might be reluctant to join in on the conversation, join in the party. And it's very easy to kind of come here and be the fly on the wall. You know, you can come onto LinkedIn and never, ever participate, but that's not necessarily in your best interest. And so we're going to talk today about sort of those pros and those cons. But the first thing, Sandra, is Let's kind of talk about the elephant in the room. What, when we say the word socially reluctant, what, what does that mean to you? You know, often people think it means people who are introverts. And introverts, the word gets misused so often. It just means really how you recharge. Mm -hmm. um, so I love people. I love being with people. I prefer them in smaller amounts, <laughs> but um, um, to recharge, I might need to go back and be on my own. But it's um, just um, how, you know, being social with other people, being with people one at a time, two at a time, or in a group, it's all different, but um, it's um, whatever you choose. I can see that. I can see that. And Oh, you went mute for a second. I don't know what happened. You went went mute. I can't hear you. Eh. Um, not hearing. Let's see if we can get your sound back. I think maybe her internet's gone a little bit goofy. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I wonder if it's... We're going to hope that her internet comes back. What? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. She's gone. Let's see. Maybe try going out and coming back in again. Maybe that would help. Try that. Go out and come back in again. Okay. So we'll just keep talking for a couple seconds because for some strange reason, I think her internet just kind of did its little funny thing. So always fun, always fun on the live. You never know what's going to expect it. And it's really interesting about the whole introvert thing, because it's hard to tell, you know, what exactly is an interview, uh, interview, what is an introvert and what's an extrovert. And so many times it's about our energy, our energy. So, okay. So we're, we're, you're back, Sandra. So that's good to, that's good to see. Everything happens on a live. It's always fun. It's always it was so hard. strange because for me, I was still sitting here looking at myself. So I, I never went away. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So we were talking about what is socially reluctant. We were talking about, it's not necessarily somebody who's shy and although, and actually introvert, you didn't say shy. You said somebody who's introverted and there can be actually extroverts that are social reluctant because you could just be a private person. And that could be part of the whole being reluctant is like, 
I get on social media and I see people, they're bearing their soul. They're talking about their depression and their mental health. And I'm not comfortable with that. So kind of that can also be part of being socially reluctant, Absolutely. correct? And also perfectionism plays into that. It's just like, well, if I put it out there, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be just right. If I make a comment, it's got to be profound. If I like it, I am kind of putting my reputation on the line. And that feels very uncomfortable to a lot of people. Um, just being seen in public. So a lot of people, they call them lurkers and lurkers becomes a bad word, but it's really not. Just hanging out on LinkedIn, learning what you can from it, uh, sending private messages to people so that nobody sees is perfectly okay. You just need to engage with people in some way, shape or form. Even if you take it offline, give someone a call, uh, send them an email. If it just triggers you to do that, that's all good. You don't have to be out there entirely for everybody to see. I love that. I love that. And I know when I was first getting started, I'm a self-disclosed introvert. People are like, how can you do LinkedIn lives and videos and still be an introvert? But you're right, Sandra. It's not about being shy necessarily. It's just about, you know, I go and do something, you know, social, and then I have to go take a nap for three hours. Like I have to go and recharge my batteries again. So to me, it's all about our energies. And I like small groups, not big groups. Big groups just totally uh, freak me out. But I know, but, but I know when I first started getting started on LinkedIn, I had a hard time posting. So I just became one of those readers, I don't like lurkers. So I became a reader, a consumer. And then I just began to comment. That was the way I kind of dipped a toe in the LinkedIn pool. Right. And one of the things for me is if your message is important, it's not about me or showcasing me, it's about getting my message out there. So if you said, Sandra, go stand on a stage in front of a thousand people and just talk about yourself, you know, I'd be curled up in the <laughs> profession in the corner. But if you said, Sandra, go out and teach, people need to hear this, they want to know how to become more comfortable on LinkedIn, I'm fine, I'm good to go and I can and do speak to large groups without a problem because it's not about me. So when I talk to people and I say, well, what do I say? What do I do? Well, what is it that, what message is it that you want to get out there in the world? What's important for people to hear, whether it's about your, your work, what you're doing, your beliefs, um, that's the message. It's not about you. And then hopefully that gets rid of some of that self-consciousness and it doesn't have to be profound. Sometimes the silliest little things you share resonate with people, make them feel comfortable uh, to also share their struggles too. I love that. And and you did a, an excellent job today. You did a post about baking shortbread and the effect that your your husband had, you know, it's like, do you put jam on this? What do you do with this? And and you said, this is just a little silliness. Like you're 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 practicing what you're preaching by just doing something that's like this is not bearing your soul. Well, I guess it is if you're talking about, you know, your own cooking, you are bearing your soul. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But you just ask people to participate in the conversation. It's like, and you said, this is just a little bit of silliness, but it was just, sometimes we need those light posts that aren't necessarily about what you do, because I think that's the danger with LinkedIn. It's like, if, if I only posted about video, here's, here's video and video and video, people would kind of start to go, is that all you ever talk about? So every once in a while, I like to ask a question. I like I did a, a post yesterday and it was all about who's using the out of office, the away feature in LinkedIn and what do you use it for? That got a lot of really interesting comments because I think people like to share their experiences and expertise. Do you find that? Absolutely. And again, you find your comfort level, what you're willing to talk about, whether it's just work, whether it's personal. Uh, it's really nice if on your profile, you can give a little bit of personal information, like in your about section, to be a conversation starter. It makes you human. And now people uh, see that and you've got something to talk about. Now, I encourage all my clients to write something a little bit personal in their, their about section. But mine is, you know, kind of exposing my soul a little bit. Um, 
but I said, it doesn't have to be like that. I can just talk about some of the things you like to do, you like to share. And I was working with a sales VP the other day and she did, I thought a brilliant job of uh, talking about herself uh, and her hobbies, but in relationship to what she's like um, in the workplace. Um, so give people a little, it doesn't have to be the bearing the soul, but give them a you know, a hobby, something you like to do, something that's important to you. And if you do that throughout, whether it's a post, something a little personal, or what you have on your profile, people will really resonate with that. And you'll be able to, I always say on LinkedIn, I never want to just add a number, add a connection. I want to add a connection to start a conversation, a conversation to lead to a relationship, and a relationship perhaps to earn the privilege of doing business together. So you just need to give a little in order for that to happen. I love that. I love that. Now, when you're working with clients who are socially reluctant, is it where, where what is, what are they reluctant about? Is it about filling out their profile, posting, sending messages? What, what sort of commonalities are you seeing? All of the above. Um, I've kind of find like, where is that point? Where are people uncomfortable? Some people just, they hate having things about themselves online. They feel very concerned about privacy. So I make sure I show them the privacy settings in the back end of LinkedIn. And we kind of talk through that, you know, the advantages and disadvantages of showing yourself. Then, you know, getting the basic information on LinkedIn you know, you don't have to put everything, but you have enough. So content, what's on LinkedIn, some people feel fairly confident in having essentially their resume, that kind of information up there. And then it gets to the point of the participating, the building relationships, the reaching out to people. Um, and so that might be, let's find a, a place that feels okay. So maybe we just start with liking or reacting. And for them, that can be a huge step. Uh, you know, let alone posting, you've got to be kidding me, you know, so it's like liking and comment is enough for them to do. So I try to get them into the rhythm of doing that. I call it three to five fruits and veggies per day, meaning three likes, two comments per day for good health on LinkedIn. And if I can get them to do that, I show them how to find a post that they want to comment on by using hashtags and that to find more interesting content. And then maybe picking out something in that post that resonates with them and just repeating it and mentioning that that really resonated with them. Just finding a safe way to find and um, to comment. And once we kind of get that going, if they're ready to start posting, great. A lot of times people never get to the point where they want to post um, or they say they do. But the reality is they don't because can never quite get to that point. But if they do, it's like, a, what What do you want to talk about? Again, to reference my sales VP the other day, she's in my mind, so she's my example. But um, she commented on someone's post um, about a TV show. It was Ted Lasso, which is what also gave me the idea. And it obviously resonated with her. And she wrote this very clever, cute comment. So I said, what about a series of posts about lessons learned in, for sales from TV shows. And she said, well, won't that make me look just too superficial? Like all I do is watch junkie TV. And I go, you know, you'll have plenty of company. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we kind of found a way of making sure that didn't feel too superficial or say like I did in my post where I referenced that this was just a bit of fun, too much horror going on in the world. I said, you can reference that it's just a series for a bit of fun, but your message is still gonna be valid and interesting. Um, so, you know, finding again, a place where someone's comfortable uh, to do that. Now I got to see whether she follows through. She's the kind of person that does follow through. So I'm excited to see what she comes up with. I love that. I love that. And I think sometimes too, it helps to find people that are similar so that you're swimming in a pond of similar fish so to speak. And I remember when I first started getting started with LinkedIn, I thought, I don't know how to comment because I don't really like the the posts I'm seeing. I, I didn't know very many people. Most of the people I did know were posting things that I just didn't even have anything to say. It, 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 it wasn't interesting to me. So I didn't really know what to do. So I just began looking for people 
that liked the same things I like. So for instance, I like books. It had nothing to do with what I was doing for a living. I was doing online marketing, but I, I just didn't want to comment on online marketing, but books was my passion. So sometimes just finding common interests and that's why I think it's really good to have on your profile different interests because then you're findable. So I was able to find, like I'm an INFJ, which is my personality type. I put that right in my headline and I meet a lot of people that are very, very similar to me. And yet they could live in a totally different country. So mm -hmm. I'm learning and I'm growing my network by finding people that are somewhat similar to me. Right. I agree. I work with uh, a lot of coaches, executive coaches, and they tend to be connected to a lot of other coaches. And that's a good, safe place for them to comment and get involved because they understand the material. But at a certain point, they need to break away because um, they're appearing in front of the same potential clients. So they need to find the people who need their help. But it's fine to get started on with other people uh, that are similar to you. Just get in that rhythm and that habit and then start to stretch a little. Um, you have to start with wherever you can and just nudge a little bit at a time. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So let's, let's, speaking of comments, let's hop over and have a look at our our friends and uh, colleagues that have joined us today. So we have Jeff Young. I just saw Sandra Clark in the audience of a live, and now I get to be in the front row for her being on stage. <laughs> Outstanding. Namaste. Uh, Annette says, woohoo, let the learning begin. So uh, yay. Thank you, Annette, for being here today. Uh, Marcia, hello, ladies. Great topic today. So this topic resonates for a, a lot of people. And I have to ask you, Sandra, why do you think this topic does resonate? It's for people who are running their own businesses, job seekers, people that work at companies. Like, talk about a topic that that broaches all fields. Why do you think this topic resonates for so many? Well, I have a suspicion. My uh, my clients are busy, smart professionals. They could learn to do them this stuff themselves. You know, I shorten the time and get them out there doing it well. But this perfectionism thing, I think, comes into it. They want to do it, but they want to do it well. They don't want to, you know, you and I will go out and try something. It doesn't work. We'll try again. We'll mess around. They want to do it correctly. They don't want to be seen to be doing anything that's not good. Um, so I think that's a part of it. Uh, I started using the term social media for the socially reluctant oh boy, more than 10 years ago. And I had it in the body of my description, but not at the top. And people were amused by it. And it kind of seemed to resonate a bit. And it was John Asperian who um, encouraged me to embrace it and put it right up there in my headline. I was a little nervous because it's like, it doesn't exactly describe what I do is that's not serious enough. And he encouraged me and I put that there and I've had so much fun since I now lead with that in my headline. People see that, oh my gosh, yes, that's me. And um, these are successful people in the workplace. They're successful, they're confident. They go into a meeting, they do their presentations, they're great. Say, go and put yourself on LinkedIn and they're going, oh, I don't know what to do, what to say. But it's like LinkedIn is, you know, it's not intuitive. It's not easy, they have not made it. Um, easy. Maybe in the very beginning, it was relatively easy, but now they keep adding things and adding things and people are terrified. Well, if I click this, what's going to happen? So they need the help with how to do things, what to click, as well as what to do, because they don't want to be seen to be making any mistakes. And I think the mistake thing, the perfectionism is really at the base of it. I agree. I agree. That's that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, okay, let's see. I, I love I love we have these like little sideline conversations going in the comment, which was really good. Okay, yeah, the, the video went fuzzy, but we're back. Okay. Uh Kevin, Kevin, speaking of new features on LinkedIn, this 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 guy is the master here. He's he goes, I'm a low energy guy, Jillian Whitney and Sandra Clark, right? 
No, Kevin, you are, you are, you are, I, I forget what you are, but I remember when you did your uh, 16 personalities and you told me what you were. I think you were like extrovert, performer. You were one of those top categories, which is good because you're rocking it, my friend. You are I always rocking it. What was that? I don't think he sleeps. <laughs> He doesn't. He doesn't. I'm up at four thirty, and there's already stuff online from him. And you know, if I check my phone before I go to bed, there's stuff there from him. So. I know. Well, no, no sleep for the wicked. Although he's not wicked, he's good. He's good. So uh, love it, love it. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you for the, the 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 live glitch. I I like learners too. Let's let's call lurkers learners because it just sounds good because they are learning. You are, you know, it's like a reader, you know, readers are leaders and I love books and, you know, and it's the same thing. It's like, I learn so much by reading other people's posts. And sometimes I don't comment and I feel bad, but I have to tell you, you know, it's funny. I was talking with somebody the other day about, you know, is it worth liking a post? Even, you know, if even like I, I comment, but should you still like a post? And I told somebody the other day, I go, this sounds really silly but I love seeing all the smiling faces. Like I, like I like seeing all the little smiling faces across my posts. It always just makes me feel like everybody's celebrating whenever I post. So I think it's worth it. You know, even if you don't comment, just a like is still nice. So I mean, at a certain point, you got to dip your foot in the water. I remember years ago, my daughter was four. She wanted to play soccer. I was very excited about playing soccer. And I took her um, to the field. And she would not participate. So we sat on the edge and she wouldn't. I was like, okay, well, you want to play? No. And we went to the next practice. She still wouldn't. And I said, okay, well, I'm willing to take you to this. But if you're not going to play, we might as well not go. She said, no, I'm, I will. And then the third practice, she jumped in. She played. She became a fierce soccer player, an excellent goalie. And goalies need to be seriously fierce. And it just, she needed to be ready and do it in her time. And I learned a lot from her. I, I think we all learn a lot from our kids. Um, and I do that the same for adults. It's just like, okay, you're okay for now looking. At a certain point, you've got to jump in. Or not jump in. You can tiptoe in if you like. But at a certain point, you need to do it. I love that. So do you, when you work with clients, do you actually do accountability? Do you Do you find that helps by actually giving them homework and saying, okay, did you go and comment on so many posts or, you know, something like that? Yeah. Most of my work with clients tends to be a one-off. I help them get set up a great profile and then they're on their own. We have one accountability session after. If I work with them longer term for posting, then they set their own goals. Um, what they're going to do, they tell me, whatever they tell me is fine. Um, and then we check, and of course, it's very visible what they do. Although I do give them the, the out that if they want to send private messages to people as their participation, they can. And I can't see that until they tell me they've done it. But uh, yeah, they set whatever the goals are that feel comfortable to them. And then they let me know how they're doing with it. I mean, ultimately, you see the results. Um, and then um, you want to do more. You get, like you see those little likes, those little happy faces. And it's kind of feels cool, right? So you want more of that. I love that. I love that. Okay. And so um, when when you're working with, with clients that are socially reluctant, how do you get over? Because I know this happens to a lot of my clients with video is the comparisons. Comparing, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I see that person and they're making videos about this and that they have special effects and this and this and this. And it's like, I always tell people, that's not what we do. That's a second day thing. And it may never be a good fit for you. And it's okay to just begin where you begin. But I think it's a natural thing to compare yourself with people. So how do you help people with not comparing themselves? Um, well, and of course, because I work with the busy, smart people, so they are constantly comparing themselves. They tend to be competitive. Um, so one is I make mistakes. And I, sometimes I, I don't need to do them on purpose. <laughs> they happen, but I don't delete them. So, you know, whether it's my videos or something I've done, um, I embrace it. And then I might do a post at some point later talking about the mistake, um, you know, what happened, what the results were. 
nothing earth shattering. And I, I call it, you know, walking is just controlled falling. You start to take a step, you start to fall. You catch yourself and you do it again. And guess what? For the most part, you are not going to fall flat on your face. And if you do, pick yourself up. And you know, if you do fall flat on your face and have to pick yourself up, people are going to come around you and support you and, and love you for it because you've uh, you've done that and shared that with them. So, you know, sometimes I do a little tough old lady talk, which is I'll tell them, get over yourself. This is not about you. It's about the people who need to hear from you. And um, sometimes it's just, as I say, I try to lead by example. And what fun. I lead by example by making mistakes publicly, right? Oh, that's my excuse for why I make them. <laughs> No, and I think that's good because I I have I have the same motto. I don't bury the evidence. If I mess up something, I not only not bury the evidence, but I usually turn around and say, this would really make people feel good to know that like, hey, even I still make mistakes. We all make mistakes. None of us is perfect. And we, we shouldn't aim for perfection because then we might never start. So I think that's that's really good. And like you said, stay in your own lane. Just do what you can do. So that's that's really good. Okay, so we have um, we have more people. Hello, everyone. Um, Muhammad, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I like that. Let's call Kevin Kevin D. Turner the new feature king. Let's call him the Energizer Bunny because that's absolutely good. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness, she's staying up late if she's up. <laughs> <laughs> because she's in India. So it's always wonderful to have our people joining from all over the world. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, great advice about making it about the message. And I know that's something that we talk about in Toastmasters all the time, that it's like, if you want to get over your fear of public speaking, if you are putting your focus on the audience, as opposed to you, that really helps to eliminate your fear and help you move forward. So I think that's important. Do you agree, Sandra? Yeah, absolutely. The more you can do that, the better. And I also encourage people to find the thing that's most comfortable for them and do it more. Uh, so when I used to, was first teaching a program, how to post content, I would teach people all the different you know, dozen types of posts to do. And I would try to get them to practice each kind. And then what I learned over time is that I would never get them to do each kind. So mm -hmm. I encourage people now to pick one or two or three things that they're willing to do. Okay, people tell you, don't do link posts because link posts don't do very well. If you do a good link post, meaning, you know, you tell people why they should look at the link and you do it consistently, go for it. If you do text posts and you're willing to do that, consistently do it. If you do um, a text with an image, and you're comfortable doing that, whatever you're doing, don't listen to all the stuff. That's, you've got to do video and you've got to do document posts. You've got to just let it go. Do the two or three things that you're comfortable with and do it consistently and you'll get the results. I love that because at the end of the day, what you're saying is honor yourself. You know what's right for you and don't feel you have to be the cookie cutter that, you know, oh, I got to do all these things because that just might not be a good fit for you. And we do have to find the good fit for us. What fits our personality? I love it. I love it. So we're, we're nearing our 30 minute mark. And so at this point, Sandra, what I'd love is if you could kind of sum it all up for us and give us a, a good sort of some sage vice uh, that we should take away with us today. No pressure or anything. Um, so you've got to participate in some way, shape, or form. If you go to a party, a networking event, you might be the person that just sits in the back and listens. You might walk around and listen to different conversations. You might move in between a couple of people and start talking with them too. And you might go and get a drink and bring it over to someone. I don't care what it is you do. Find something that's comfortable for you to do on LinkedIn and then just do it and get involved. You'll meet wonderful people. You'll have incredible conversations, even if you're mostly just listening. And it will pay off in building those relationships over time so that when you need the help, be it to find clients, to get a new job, as so many people, especially in my area, are having to do, 
they will be there ready to support you. So just get involved, get engaged. And if you haven't reached out to connect to all the people in the chat, you know, go ahead and do that. Hopefully you'll reach out and connect to Jillian and me. And you'll also include a message where you met us so that we've got a conversation starter right to begin with. I what love that. Family? Hopefully helpful. That's great. That's great advice. And I love it. It's like, just begin, just, just start on the journey, sort of like Dorothy going off to Oz. It's like, follow the yellow brick road. Just take one step at a time. I love it. Thank you very much. Well, this has been an awesome conversation, Sandra. I do encourage everyone to reach out to you, follow you, connect with you. Like you said, leave a very lovely message. And, um, and that, and that's the power of what we can do is embrace that we can send messages and it's an easy way to, to, to make those initial connections without having to pick up a dreaded telephone. So that's good. Well, thank you very much for being here today, Sandra. Thank you everyone who has joined us today live or on the replay. And we look forward to seeing you next time on LinkedIn live with Jillian and friends. Bye everybody. Thank you so much.